and welcome to Let's Girl Speaks. Today is Tuesday, January 2nd, 2018. This is episode 211, and my name is Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat SQRRL on Instagram. Hi, how are you? Happy 2018, y'all. Right. Welcome 2018. It's very cold. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Um, I do, I don't want to say apologize, but I appreciate your patience with the potentially high amount of ambient noise that will be happening during this week's podcast. I've been waiting quite some time to see if the very strange looking men who are cleaning out the vacant house next door would stop banging on a big metal plate on their truck, but apparently they're not going to do it anytime soon. That, combined with the fact that my 11-year-old child is upstairs making some sort of strange ruckus, even though I haven't heard a peep out of him for the last three hours, may provide an interesting background to today's podcast. No school today here in Indianapolis, because temperatures at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. were below zero. We, in fact, have a wind chill warning until 1 p.m. Wait, that's already over. Never mind. We're all good now. Normally, I don't talk like a newscaster, but for some reason, I'm feeling compelled to do so this afternoon. And maybe it's try to counter the amount of craziness that's going on around me. Hmm. Maybe that's what it is. So just a brief hello to new folks. It seems like there are several of you checking in on the YouTube channel, so welcome. Uh, somebody asked on the comments from last week's episode, I think. Or maybe it was the tree episode. I don't know recently um why i call the show the fat squirrel speaks so i think what i'll do is do like an introduction or greetings episode um in which i talk about why the podcast is called that how i started knitting how i started sh um, spinning that kind of like backgroundy information that is hard to find on an episode on a podcast that has like 210 ridiculous other episodes out there so <laughs> expect to see that in about a week if you're an itunes viewer um, it probably will not go up on iTunes just because that is not an easily searchable field and I can't like separate it out so I don't think it'll be as useful. Um, so if you are an iTunes viewer and you're interested in that, it will be on the YouTube page. I'll try to mention next time we have a regular podcast what that's called and where you can find it. Okay. Oh my goodness, right. So today's podcast will include... So many prizes, but I think we will do them towards the end because I know that sometimes when you're not involved in the prize winning or potential prize winnery, that that's really annoying to sit through prizes. So we'll do that at the end. Um, otherwise, the podcast will contain shenanigans of the mind, really, mostly. It's called Yo. Um, it will contain knitting. Oh, I should have brought my spinning over. It won't contain spinning, but I have been doing a little bit of spinning. Inspired by earlier this week when I wore um, a, a, a hat that Joanna Spring of Knit Spun Farm had spun me the yarn for. And it's like fingering weight, which I'm not very good at spinning finger weight at all. Okay, I'm less than not good if that's possible. But anyway, it's so beautifully warm and thin and magical that I was like, I must spin more yarn for hats. So I'm attempting to do that. Um, and I do have some yarn to ply. So yes, there'll be some spinning in next week's episode, or next time's episode. Okay. Um, but it will contain knitting works in progress. No finished objects this week. Okay with that. And I th oh, and some shameless self-promotion, quite frankly. And then the prizes at the end, as we discussed. Right. Let's get into it. Just a moment to say there will probably be frequent edits in this podcast because of the insane banging. Like sometimes it gets to the point where it's distracting beyond my normal distraction level, which is pretty high. That means the distraction is like super mega ultra high. So if you're seeing blippiness, that's why. Just FYI. Everything's okay. Really, the, the house has been vacant now for... Oh my gosh, do you hear a lot of that? six months and it's apparently a TARDIS because they pull insane amount of stuff out of there like there's not it's a huge old house like it's an 1800 like late 18, 1800s house and it was built by like a doctor or something um 
when this was a suburb of Indianapolis, which it no longer is, now it is Indianapolis. Anyway, they've been pulling stuff out of there for like six days now, I think. Five. Yeah, this is the fifth day they've been pulling stuff out of that house. And it's just like two mega scruffy looking dudes. And like their beat up metal <laughs> trailer on their truck. And it's so loud. I got what they're doing. I don't want to look out there because I don't want to accidentally make eye contact with anybody. Oh my gosh, let's try to do a podcast. Okay. So, shenanigans. There really weren't that many shenanigans this week. Because um, we've only, it's only been a week since I've recorded. What? How's that possible? But we did have friends over for New Year's Eve and we did play a game. We, I will confess that we habitually play Cards Against Humanity and I have nothing against Cards Against Humanity. I purchased the game. I in fact purchased all known expansions to the game, including Crabs Adjust Humidity, uh, Guards Against Humanity, Carps versus Manatees. I, our, the game of it now weighs like 20 pounds or something. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So I have nothing against the game, but it becomes like a default game because, not the default game, it becomes the only game people want to play because I, the game is funny and silly, but really the game plays itself. So like it just uses you as a tool for itself. Like yes, there is input on your part slightly, um, but I would say even less so than for something like apples to apples, which is like the PG predecessor to Cards Against Humanity. Um, so anyway, I don't know how I got started on that. I guess it was just to say, I tried to trick everybody into playing something different. <laughs> but that still had that party game quality where you're not like trying to strategize. It require, it causes a ruckus a bit because we all kind of need more of a fun adult, like a fun ruckus in our lives, I think occasionally. Um, so it like it has that energy of like silliness and weirdness, but but you have a little bit more input over it. Um, so this is the game that we played. It's called Anomia, I guess that's how you say it. And it is a party game. This is the party edition. They're all smaller editions that you can get for just like to see if you want to try it out um, and play with like a family or whatever. It's uh, three to six players. We played with five um, and it really does. It actually gets better with the more. I think it's just as good with like we played with four people and five people. Oh, no, we did play with six people at one point. Um, and I think it's actually better when it goes up because it gets a little bit more complicated because what you're actually trying to do is um, you're, d you're drawing cards from a pile in order around the table and you're trying to match these little symbols on the cards. See these little shapes? And what happens is if I have the double zigzag lines, um, then I'm looking to see if anybody else flips over the double zigzag line card on their side of the table. And then what I have to do is look at their card and try to think of something that's in the category. So you see that the category here is famous criminal. Well, their category could be mammal. And so they, I have to come up with a mammal before they can come up with a famous criminal. And you might be like, whoa, that doesn't even sound right because famous criminal is much more difficult to come up with than mammal. And actually, it is surprising that when you're under pressure, it is actually much easier sometimes to come up with these very specific categories than the super broad ones. I, in fact, last I lost on the mammal category because I could not get a mammal word out of my mouth. So it's really fun. And um, it's 10 and up. I will say that, like, you probably want to have... It is ages 10 and up, but for example, we had one of the younger kids, I mean, she's not a kid. She's, what is she now, 16? Oh my gosh, I'm getting so old. Wanted to play with us and she played, but it is more challenging for younger people. Um, or like when there's a big discrepancy between like adults and children playing together because they are at a disadvantage, like they just are. Um, so it's, I would not, maybe the, I don't know about the, the smaller editions, but I don't really feel like it would be great as a family game because I don't see how young children and adults would be able to compete on fair footing. Um, 
but maybe that's just my own skewed perspective. But anyway, it was very fun. And we played it, we had, I think there's six decks of cards. And we played each deck through. So we played for quite a few, I think we played for a few hours. And it was interesting. At first it was just four of us playing. One, two, three, four, five, six, yes. At first it was just four of us playing. Um, and one of the other people was kind of like sitting at the table with us doing something else. And he, <laughs> you could tell he was like, I don't get why this game is funny. Like, why are these women all dra like cracking up over nonsense? But then when he started to, because he was like to be like, well, I just think that like he was giving us like strategic approaches to the game, which is, you know, this is funny in a party game. But once he started playing, he completely got into the spirit and very much enjoyed it and understood why it is fun and why it is stressful. I mean, not stressful, but why it is stressful to come up with these random things off the top of your head. Um, so he very much enjoyed it. So if you're thinking like, that doesn't really sound like you'll be in, it's, it's quite good. And the good thing about it too is because it is just one answer that you have to come up with, um, it doesn't seem to give bias to people who have like a lot of like trivia level knowledge. There's some categories like, actually all the, like I'm looking at categories right now that are like unit of length, rain gear, because <laughs> I dropped the box. Because I'm classy like that. Let me see if I can turn another one over my toe. Mm. Uh, unisex name. So most of the categories are very like non, uh, I would say culturally pretty adaptable. Um, Age-wise, again, adaptable in terms of like, it's not, there's not like, you know, 2015 songwriters or something like that that we have to have like very specific knowledge. The sports categories are very general, like famous soccer player, um, famous golf player. So I think the most specific one was like Super Bowl winner or Super Bowl te winning team. But I mean, I just guessed a football team that happened to coincidentally be a Super Bowl. <laughs> so yeah, it was very fun. I, I highly recommend it. The game's been out for a very long time and I think it's pretty much easy to find anywhere um, in terms of like the internets and your local game store. But and we enjoyed that quite a bit. So yeah, we did that. Um, still on shenanigans of the mind. I've been listening to The Dorito Effect, which is by a person who wrote a book. I checked it out from my library. Uh, well, checked it out so it doesn't seem the right word, but it's by Mark Shat Shatsker. Um, I checked out the audiobook through my on my digital <laughs> my library's digital media collection. Oh. It's very enjoyable. It's all about, as you can imagine, the Dorito effect. It's about the science of flavors and how um, different flavors have been developed and why they've been developed, uh, which points to like the change in how we grow foods for um, size, for growth per pound of feed, for um, shelf stability, for all of those techniques over, or for, excuse me, techniques, all of those attributes over flavor and how that has consequently led to this explosion um, in artificial and natural flavorings, but essentially man-made of flavorings, imitation vanilla, um, and all of those natural and artificial flavorings as you see on, on labels. It's very interesting. I'm only about a third of the way through, but I've enjoyed it very much. And it's a very good if you are having, if you're feeling pushed back against uh, the traditional New Year's diet resolutions that you are being bombarded with at the moment. It's a pretty good push back to that because it really does point to the intentional deception of our current food system um, and kind of gives again gives a nice counterpoint to all of those other messages that you're seeing right now anyway I'm, I recommend it thus far we'll see how it goes in the short term in the short term in the near future oh my god <laughs> so let's talk about some knitting. Right. Oh, in case I forget to forget, this. <laughs> in case I forget to forget. In case I forgot to mention, this is a Ricky hat. It's R I K K E, 
and that is by Sarah Young, and this is in Leading Mean Fiber Arts Dramaturge in the Into the Woods colorway. <coughs> it is one of my most worn hats of all time, I think, okay? It just sits on the head perfectly, and it's very enjoyable to wear. Um, so it's on that so let's show some, oh, since I just mentioned that hat, let's find the one I just cast on. What? It's true. Look at the synchronicity. Okay. So I just cast on, on New Year's Eve, I think I got like two rows in it, <laughs> a Ricky hat, and this is in Marigold Jen. Um, it's her MCN DK in the Lagoon colorway. I love Marigold Jen. She has an Etsy shop and is a lovely human being all around. So there it is. Isn't that gorgeous? This is actually pretty deep stash. I think I've had this in the stash for about four years, maybe even longer. It's one of the, one of the very f first hand dyed yarns I think I'd ever purchased, or at least in the very early times. And so it's been sitting in stash just just waiting to be luxuriously cast on. If you're new, those are my dogs. They're obnoxious. Uh, they're really not. They're pretty good. <laughs> so I am knitting that with on US threes uh, for the brim, and then I think the body of the hat will be either in a four or five. I am knitting, in, knitting it in the round, but I am using a knit only method. Um, and what that is, if you'd like to see an actual video demonstration out of it, Paula of the Knitting Pipeline, if you Google Knitting Pipeline, no pearl garter, I think is what it is in the round. I think that's too many words, but if you use some of those words, I think you'll find it. <laughs> and basically what it is, is you knit an entire row until you get to your beginning of round marker. So do 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 do. I'm at the beginning of my round marker and we're together. Um, so I've knit to the beginning of my round marker. Then what I do is slip my stitch marker, wrap the next stitch, and then turn my knitting um, so that I am then knitting on the wrong side. And then I knit around to the marker again, slip the marker, wrap the next stitch, and do the same thing. Again, turn the work so that you're working on the other side, which is now the front side again, the right side again, um, so that you're getting a garter stitch effect but you're only knitting. Now, you will have look, some beautiful hair. I was totally going to like, oh, I'll just record that introductory podcast today. And then I realized maybe if I'm going to put something up that I want people to look at for a long term, I should shower first. And that's not happening today because that's I mentioned. It's very cold. So you will have a bit of a line in the back. But really, nobody is going to notice that except another knitter. And especially on a hat like this, so I'm going to pretend that this is the back, this is now the back of my head, y'all. No dogs walking backward jokes. I don't appreciate it. So this is the seam, right? So this is the back of my head. Imagine this is the back of my head because it looks like hands and not a face. What is that? When you wear a slouchy, oh, it's not going to work because the back of my head is really not the back of my head. <laughs> if you're new to the podcast, yes, it's always like this. This is not anomalous. See, you can't even really see it very much anyway. You only see like it up here in the crown decreases, which look like crown decreases anyway. See, yeah, that's legit. <laughs> see, yeah, you, can't, you really don't notice it at all. Because again, it's the back of your head. I'm not sure why I have not been given my own television show. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is, okay. So that's my Ricky. And the next thing I'll show you is, as I mentioned, cold. There's a theme in this week's podcast, besides me looking like an idiot, which is the theme of every week's podcast. Um, I've cast on a dog sweater. If you are a returning viewer, okay, let me talk about the sweater first, and then I'll talk about how it's so ridiculous. Um, this is the... Dandy Dog Sweater by Evelyn Clark. 
and mine is made with Bartlett's, Bartlett Yarns 2-ply in their spruce colorway. 2-ply is pretty much a worsted or an airing weight yarn. And this is knitting, I'm knitting this for my dog Annie, who is a miniature schnoodle, so she's a schnauzer poodle mix. And she has hair like human hair, so I know, before I got a dog, I would have never thought I'd be a person who put a sweater on a dog. But she has very human-y hair and she gets cold, you can tell. She's like looking for some place to be warm. So last year I made her a full-on hand-spun brioche dog sweater. I can't find it. I'm not even kidding you. Hand-spun yarn, brioche, dog sweater. I made up the pattern, there isn't one. Uh, don't know where it is. Where did it, it's not like she wore it to her friend's house and left it there. She didn't accidentally leave it at the movie theater in the seat. Where is it? <laughs> My house is like 1,400 square feet. It can only be so many places. I don't know which one of those places it's in. Can't find it. So she's wearing her very first dog sweater, which is like this much too short. <laughs> well, it's not too short. It fits on her. But just to like cover as much of her tummy rump as it used to. <laughs> So she's getting a new one. Um, this pattern includes, do I have the picture? Oh, I have the picture. Why did I look at the book to see what it was? I'm a hot mess, y'all. Um, it has three options. I am making the mock cable option, which is right here. Um, and then it has four sizes, right? Oh no, there's six sizes? Seven sizes, sweet goodness. All the way up from extra, extra small, which means your dog's chest is 12 inches around, up to extra, extra large, meaning the dog's chest is 30 inches around. They are all knit with rib, so there is a little bit of give in them. Um, and there are, there are multiple neck, shop, neck options. There's a turtleneck, a mock turtleneck, and two other things, which I don't remember. Oh, here we go. No, it doesn't tell me. There's a crew neck, and there's like a polo neck or something like it. Excuse me. Okay. I think that's all I need to tell you about the pattern. Um, it is expensive. I think it's like $6.95. I should say that's expensive. That's not expensive. But I mean, there are plenty of free dog sweater patterns out there. I don't know why I felt so compelled to buy this one. <laughs> I will tell you, it is an old school pattern and that there's not a lot of attention paid to the edging of the fabrics. Like, I think it's 2001 or something like that. This was back when I learned, before I even learned to knit. I know, it's after I learned to knit, but like back in that, the pre-Ravelry times. And at that time, a lot of designers did not pay attention to like an edging stitch or, there was just less attention paid to those small details. Like, yes, it's a dog sweater. Maybe that's part of it. But you know, as a knitter, when you're making something, it's about the process of making it. You're looking at it a lot, so it needs to please you as much as the recipient. Um, so I'm not super satisfied with the pattern in those ways. The other thing is it's a little bit interesting or different in that you knit the back from the, it's to the dog's front. So you knit this until you get done with the length, and then you actually join it together like under their neck. And then you need a second panel, which you then put in here, almost like a gusset, um, which where you don't, for example, it's like a triangular panel that you put in here and you just don't seam it where the leg holes will be. So it is easy in terms of, um, you don't have to do a lot of measuring or anything because technically you could just put the pieces on the dog um, and pin it like where you think and see if their legs will work in that. So that's nice that you, it's easier to do adjustments um, for the dog, but it seems a little bit fiddly for what you could just like cast on, whatever. So I'll be modifying it a bit. I will be casting on for the underside and then knitting that in the round um, and then just leaving armholes in there. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll do it and I'll be like, oh, well, that's the reason she did it that way happens a lot when you think you know what you're doing. <laughs> so anyway, it's very enjoyable. Bartlett yarns. And I'm very happy. I had like four skeins of this that I was going to make slippers with. And a viewer said that she had had trouble knit or felting with her Bartlett yarn. Um, 
So I thought, well, maybe I'll hold off on that. So I'm happy to have a use for these. Not that it's gonna take four skeins for Annie a sweater, but whatever. Yay, that. Okay, and then the next thing I'll show you, I talked a little bit about last week, and that is my Granito sweater. And that is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. And it is a top-down positive ease sweater. And this is how much I have so far. What? It has these really cute slip stitch. Oh, left and right are difficult, y'all. Slip stitch um, lines on both the front and the back of the sweater, which are fun to give it a little bit more. I don't want to say structure because it's not actually structure, but to give it more of a structure look, I think adds interest to it. Um, and it'll have pockets, which is always pleasant. Is that all I want to say? I think that's all I want to say. Meow. Um, so this is Beaver Slide Dry Goods, and they're two ply sport in the spine. It's like a tree word. Uh, ah, juniper in the juniper heather colorway. Did I see that the dog was in spruce? The dog sweater was in spruce. I just thought that was interesting. I'm really greening it up lately. Um, but so anyway, it's very pleasant. It is a sport slash fingering. The pattern is written sport, or excuse me. I think the pattern is written fingering weight. This is a sport that is, it's listed as a sport, but it could be a fingering weight. You know, it's that kind of thing. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I'm a little bit nervous because I don't do a lot of, um, loosey goosey sweaters, but the yarn is at a loose enough gauge that I think it'll have pretty good drape. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully it doesn't make me look like this when I'm done, which it might. Okay. Uh, that'll be all this week for knitting and spinning. Oh my gosh. Now let's look at the notes. I mean, I took the time to make all these notes. Maybe I should look at them. Maybe I should reference them. Maybe I should see. See, I even wrote what I was wearing and then I didn't wear it. I was going to wear my stripe study and then I didn't wear that. Um. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Actually, we're doing pretty good. Okay. Um, so the last thing, well, the second to last thing we'll do is we will do some shameless self-promotion. Uh, the podcast, the podcast, the podcast is in part supported by the shop at fatsquirrelfibers.bigcartel.com. You can find it by Googling Fat Squirrel Fibers. We'll take you right there. Surprisingly, nobody else has that as a shop name. Anyway, <laughs> so in the shop right now are a few bags that are hol holding on. <gasps> right, to uh, this fabric. I may have held on to this fabric longer than reasonable because I could decide if I wanted to in fact make a dress out of it. I'm still not happy that I didn't. Hmm, I should have. Oh well, that's okay. Sometimes you gotta be responsible. <laughs> it is a cotton linen bin fabric with these metallic bits and foxes on it. Right. So I have a small wedge, which is actually like a small wedge plus because it was supposed to be a large wedge and then I accidentally cut it too narrow. Cause I'm a human. Yeah. And it's interfaced and has a plain cotton interior. Okay. Interior. And then in the actual large wedge size, we have the same fabric in red. All right. It's a little jazzy. And then a sweater size. What? That is interfaced with a quilt batting. So it has more body and will stand up by itself. And then on January 5th, I hope, I think that's Friday, um, I'm going to have a hug. That's not, how, that's not the best way to say that. But I'm having um, an update with this amazing hug Scandinavian inspired fabric. What? Right. Oh. Are you in love? This designer is brilliant. I apologize. Now I don't know who it was. It's not one of my usual folks, but this fabric. There is this super judgy cat on it, y'all. 
for my cat people. This cat's judging you. She's part of your cozy reprieve, but she is judging you about it. The dog, however, not judging. I'm just going to use your giant yarn ball as a blank, as a pillow. He's cool. Do whatevs. Give him treats and a yarn ball pillow. He's cool. Judging. Cool. Judging. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> FYI, there are a limited number of these bags. Um, and I was a little bit disappointed because you can see a very faint line running right here. And I don't, I don't know that Eddie Bills would know. You probably can't even pick it up on the camera. But there is a tiny, probably just uh, a tiny, it's not even millimeters. It's teensy tiny. Um, that the, the fabric, the coloring is just the tiniest bit off. So I apologize, but it was through the whole length of the fabric. And come on, you can't even, I mean, it was still worth making it up. Okay. Because it's amazing. <laughs> So that's in the shop January 5th. Um, if you, oh, if you're a knitting pipeliner and you're still watching, uh, I am going to the knitting pipeline retreat this year. It's in February in Washington, Illinois. And I do typically do a pre-order for that, which I will hold on, oh, excuse me. I will hold through January 21st through January 26th ish. Um, so I'll have pre-orders up in the shop. Uh, I don't have the fabric to show you because it's still coming in, uh, but those will be available. If you miss the pre-order and that's the future and you're going to the retreat, don't worry, I'll have some, I should have some available there. That's usually how it works. Okay, so I think that's all shameless self-promotion. Now let's do prizes. Oh my gosh, prizes. Okay, let's do prizes, prizes. Um, I will do benefactor prizes. <gasps> Patreon and PayPal supporters. And then I will do um, knits from the crits prize crits bah, gar, knits from the crips prizes. So if you donated to the podcast in the fourth quarter of 2017, so October, November, or December, you were entered in to win a prize. This year, I forgot to bring it to you. This year is a 2018 sweater tea towel, so it's super cute. I've shown them on the podcast before. Um, and the winners are in no particular order because you're all getting the same prize. <laughs> Teresa B. Woo, Teresa. So if you're Teresa, I didn't write down the date you donated, but if you're Teresa and your email address contains the word music, that's you. Send me your human address, people, because I don't have them for all of you. I'm sure some of you are customers, but sometimes I don't have it. So email it to me. Um, you can email it to amy, B like boy, M A Y S at gmail.com. That's amybmaze at gmail.com. It's also the same place you play pal too. Okay. Um, the second winner, Autumn. Oh, it's you, Autumn. It's you, Autumn B. I actually had to check to make sure you had one before, but I don't think you have. Because I was like, oh my gosh, oh no. I don't normally check to see if you won before. <laughs> and the third prize goes to Donna W. Donna W, if you're a Gmail addresser, that's you. You won. Email me your human address and name. Autumn. I forgot to say that you are, you have the numbers 213 in your email address, if that's you. <gasps> But you, I think you're my only autumn. What's up? So if you donate to the prize, to the prize, to the podcast <laughs> in the first quarter of 2018, so in January, February, or March, you will be entered to win. <gasps> what? The super special Rhinebeck Andre Sue knits. Well, needles up probably, because I'm sure she'll use the same thing at Maryland. Which I'm Right? I got you a sock blank, y'all. One for you. One for me. You'll be entered to win. What? That's right. This super cool hat kit from Blue Sky Fibers. I purchased it. They did not donate it. 
but uh, it's so pretty. I felt like I needed to share it because I have so much wealth of hats. I thought maybe you needed it. You can also make mittens if you want. It's really gorgeous. And this yarn is beautiful. And then also a Sucre Sucre miniature, which I forgot to bring to you. Actually, I didn't forget. I just was too lazy to go find it because it's this big. But I know I have it. So you'll win one of those three prizes. So you can either donate um, on the Patreon page or you can donate at PayPal. Um, the email address I just gave out which you can find on thefatsquirrel.com um, on a regular computery type thing. It'll be to the left, be a yellow, yellow button. If you're on a mobile device, you just scroll all the way to the bottom and there'll be a yellow donate button. Button, button. Oh my God. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is prizes for Knits from the Crips. Um, so, what I did was, uh, I didn't run this cow very well, and I apologize. Um, things got hectic and I didn't check in as often as I should have, or at all, for like a month and a half. I'm very bad at things sometimes. <laughs> but I do really appreciate everybody who posted, um, whether it was a question or a comment, there were so many awesome modifications to sweaters, which is exciting because not only is it, you know, such an investment in time and and money uh, to create a finished object, but also like an investment in spirit and intention and hope. And so it's really great to see those objects reworked into something that you're going to use, or, you know, at least have moved you closer to something that will work in the future. Um, so what I did was, uh, I did a random gen number generator for the entire thread. So I can't remember how many entries there were now. Uh, but I used the entire thing as a range. And then what I did is generate five numbers. Um, the first prize is going to the first entry because I was just gonna pick any entry, whether it was a finished object or a question or a comment on somebody else's thing. Um, but that's the first prize. And then the second prize is actually the first number that was attached to a finished object. Um, so that's how we did it. We did one for just anybody, and then the second one is only for, is for somebody who did complete something. So I hope that works out for everybody. Since I never told you what the prizes were, or if there was a prize really, I figure you're okay with it. <laughs> so the first prize goes to, la 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 la, knit people knit. And I'm sorry, Knit People Knit, you totally put a question out there. Um, knit People Knit had made a boxy and was not happy with how it fit. Um, and I'm afraid of doing, I'm afraid of this with my granito right now. Um, especially, I say, the back of sweaters when they're loose tend to look, just make you look a lot bro like bigger than is, is than you necessarily want. Um, especially if there's not a ton of drape in them. But again, even if there is drape, it's not always gonna like perfectly lay against your back. Anyway, so I'm sorry that I didn't get back to you. I don't really know that I've had a good solution, but hopefully it worked out or you learned a good lesson. But anyway, you get a prize. <laughs> so your prize is the super cute, awesome project bag. What? If you hate this project bag and it makes you want to stab out your own eyeball, please don't. Just send me a message. <laughs> and we'll work something different out. <laughs> but it's really cute, y'all. Okay. Second prize goes to... And I don't know how to say it. A N. O W L I S Annapolis. Anyway, Anna totally re made a swan show. Was not in love with it. She re she took out the neck, and let me just say the swan show is knit top down. So like kudos for the bravery. Um, she she took the neck out and knit a new neck. She said it's still not her favorite thing, but I think the cool thing that she said is that it gave her the brevity the power, the strength. Those are probably all too big of a word for what it is. But anyway, <laughs> she feels like she's more confident about reworking her knits in the future. So yay! Oh, if you want to contact me, oh, get this project bag. It's 
got super cute Happy Little Sparrow birds on it. Oh my gosh. They're super cute. But if they want to make your stab your eye out, just call me. Don't call me. Just message me. <laughs> you can PM me on Ravelry. Um, or you can talk, you can send me an email at amybmaze.gmail.com. Not dot at. That's probably what it is. So yes, I just want to say thank you again. Um, great inspiration over there on the boards, on the Ravelry group. Um, lots of folks, again, just getting good ideas about trying to rework something. And hopefully it'll like carry over into other, you know, aspects of your making life or just your consuming life. Like I have a down vest that I've never really liked. It's always been too tight in my hips, so I just don't ever wear it. And it was not an expensive one by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but I am currently thinking about like cutting up the uh, side seam of it and putting in a little gusset. Um, so anyway, so lots of, you know, it's just, I think it's cool to try to rethink about um, applying those things to other aspects of your life. So is that all? Can I finally shut up? I think I can. Oh my gosh. I will see you soon. I'll do an introductory episode. And again, that should be out in about a week. I shouldn't say all those things. So that is all for this week. Ah! I think that's all. I'll think of something else three seconds after I say goodbye to you. But for now, that's all. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.